but I will allow myself to remind this audience what was said. I would like to quote the speech of General Secretary Mr. Werner of Brussels on May 17, 1990. He said at the time, quote, the fact that we are not ready to place a NATO army outside of German territory gives the Soviet Union a firm security guarantee. Where are these guarantees? And do you know what the answer was? The answer was, yes, but that was guarantees given to the Soviet Union, and you're Russia. Well, what kind of a reaction would you expect? Um, last year, I think it was, making a foreign policy speech, Putin said, our mistake was that we trusted you too much. And your mistake was that you tried to take advantage of that. That is the situation today. Now, it may seem to you that I'm blaming the United States. I don't want the word blame used. It was a mistaken political decision. It was not the Russians. It was this decision that finally led to this change in Putin's attitude towards the West, and in particular, towards the United States, which is why I say how US policy created Putin the way he is today. And the really, if you will, um, um, dangerous thing is that Russian leadership, or I should be more precise and say Vladimir Putin, does not trust the West does not trust the United States, which makes it very difficult to move away from where we are today. So that, that's something I want to underline. So we are in now in a new arms race, which is terrible. We are in a new Cold War, which threatens all of us. The danger of an accidental nuclear exchange has grown. We no longer seem to fear that. There used to be demonstrations. You know, get rid of nuclear weapons. That's not happening anymore. The uh, possibility of a terrorist organization somehow getting a nuclear weapon has grown. And to make it look like someone used it on each side, not the terrorists. So that, I believe, is something we should all understand. And finally, as someone who works in media, I would like to say that Russian media, uh, mainstream, I'm, I mean mainstream media, paints America black. Russian media mainstream media controlled directly or indirectly by the government um, shows a, an extremely negative picture of the United States, US policy, and so on. And much to my surprise, mainstream American media does exactly the same thing vis-a-vis -vis Russia, which to me is amazing because this is supposed to be a free media as differing from the Russian one. As someone who works in Russian media, I can say it's, it's hard to call it a free media. There are some opposition newspapers and radio, but that's not mainstream. They address a very small number of people. So there we are. I think, I think people who call themselves journalists, in my book, they're, they're not journalists. But those people have played and are playing a destructive role in creating the fear, the dislike, the distrust that the people in both countries have vis-a-vis -vis each other. And the fact that we don't seem to question our media is really quite interesting. But there it is, nonetheless. We just take it. So I'd like to wind up with a quote from a gentleman, no, I hesitate to use the word gentleman, from a <clears throat> man whose name was Hermann Goering. You all know who he was? 
there may be some people who are too young to know. Well, he was um, Hitler's right-hand man, and he commanded the Luftwaffe, the German Air Force. And he was, of course, at Nuremberg. He was judged, sentenced to death, to hang. But he managed to get some poison, probably from the Soviets, of course, uh, since they poison people, as we know. Um, so, so it's not to be hanged. But he was um, interviewed by an American journalist shortly before he committed suicide. And here's what he said. And I think this is something that we should all remember. Naturally, the common people don't want war, neither in Russia nor in England, nor for that matter in Germany. That is understood. But after all, it is the leaders of the country who determine the policy. And it is always a simple matter to drag the people along, whether it is the democracy or a fascist dictatorship or a parliament or a communist dictatorship. Voice or no voice, the people can always be brought to the bidding of the leaders. That is easy. All you have to do is tell them they are being attacked and denounce the peacemakers for a lack of patriotism and exposing the country to danger. It works the same in any country, said Mr. Goering. And I think he was absolutely right. And we are being led by our media, by our politicians, in that direction, in both countries. I remember an ad that I saw, a famous uh, American actor, whose name I, who, he starred in, um, oh gosh, so many movies. Um, an, Afro, uh, an African American, uh, um, not a young, not not a young, yeah, free, what? Freeman. Freeman, yes, yes, and he says, "We are at war," and he does it very well. He's a wonderful actor, but he, you know, he tells you, "We are at war, and we must," and da 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 da, and of course, it's very scary. I, you know, I, there's nothing I can do about that except speak. And I speak, I'm happy to speak here today. I do this in Russia. And I'll keep doing it as long as I possibly can because there has to be some voice raised against what's happening. We're being manipulated. You know, the way Putin is portrayed, well, he's worse than Hitler. And even, even Hillary Clinton compared him to Hitler. I'm, this is, I'm not a Putin fan, believe me. But you know, what's, what's going on here? And of course, President Trump. Well, even your own press is not too, uh, not too positive about him. But anyway. So basically, that's what I wanted to share with you. And see, I've only spoken for 45 minutes. And, uh, and I would very much like to discuss uh, if you, I hope you have problems, and uh, problems. Quen uh, uh, that was a Freudian slip, wasn't it? Uh, I hope uh, you have questions. I'm sure that, you know, what I've just said, in the sense of what's happened, it can't be argued about. I mean, this is, these are facts. But how you interpret them, that's a whole different issue. So uh, thank you again for... For listening, and let's let's talk.